recording. That's I'm recording now. Yeah. Okay, you're doing that. Okay. Oh, yeah. remember also when you're uh, uploading on YouTube, even though I get cuts from that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't go like, okay, four, three, two, one. I don't know if you're able to cut that part out. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. 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 All yeah. Right. What? Uh, but yeah, we were recording, so uh, you know. So whatever, yeah, that's fine. Whatever we want to talk about. Um, yep. So right now, the Senate is doing a motion to proceed. They're trying, they're trying to get a vote, and mm -hmm. McConnell gave them till Monday to do this motion to proceed, and then something a motion to closure that they need sixty votes. Seven Dems have to jump aboard to get this thing to go forward. To get the bill on the floor for a vote on the Justice Act. Oh, on the Justice Act. You know what? What? What is the full text of the Justice Act? That you know, I don't. I I didn't read. Uh, read it. All I all I've been hearing is what is on the uh, you know, the headlines. Uh, I scrimmed through it. You look at it, Doctor. I looked through it a no, bit. I, I haven't because I didn't have the actual number, and I always kind of cringe at probably reading the wrong one. So if I had the actual number, I'll. I'll pull it and read it. Yeah, I was I was able to look a little bit. I have the number. I got it somewhere. I looked through it a bit. It does have the mental mental health professional. You gave a good point, Dr. Nett, on the point of a doctor as a police or a former police officer. Um, it's not a bad idea to probably get a special trained cop to come on scene, mm -hmm. like a, a domestic violence or somebody EDP, which is a mostly disturbed person. But it, like you have a hostage uh, negotiator, like you have the cops come yeah. on scene and, and they have somebody specifically trained to deal with a, an emergency. Let's say, example, EDP, you get a person and you get the call and say, we want to bring somebody on scene who is a cop already, mm -hmm. but it's specialized training. Yes, the president and executive order together with the Justice Act of the Senate, they mm -hmm. want to work on getting funding to get those type of training for specific officers that can mm -hmm. come on scene to try to defuse or deescalate. Now, my opinion is you can get all the training and all the money into the department, but you're still gonna come across people that are very emotionally disturbed. Cops come on scene and it's, a, it's iffy because what if the person does flip out and the cops have to use lethal force? And that's the key thing. How do you do that? How do you try to distinguish between a cop making a judgment call and has to do a split second decision on somebody who has a knife, even if they're EDP. I seen a video the other day of a person charging at a cop with a knife in his hand and the cop never discharged her weapon. Nothing happened, thank God, because she was able to de-escalate, but that doesn't work all the time. What do you think? No, I, I think that in those situations, when you, when you brought up a police, when you bring law enforcement into the picture, it's because things are escalating into a violent fashion. I, I mean, I would hope that people don't have like discourse or discussions and, and call police for no good of a reason. When people are yelling at each other and emotions are high, you call law enforcement. Law enforcement is mostly there to de-escalate it, um, perhaps restrain or arrest someone who's gone beyond uh, the safety zone. And if you start putting people in there that frankly don't believe in um, armed restraint or arrest or whatever, they may end up either being a victim um, of the perpetrator or assailant, or they may actually stand in the way and some other innocent person may get killed too. I think it's, it's the wrong thing. It's sort of like saying, okay, well, I, I have someone who's bleeding out. I'm going to insert um, a grief counselor in the picture. And you're like, but I'm coding this patient. That 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 may help the family member, but you go over there, you're not helping me. Yeah, so yeah. I just I think that these are unrealistic um, expectations. Uh, I think that when the crap hits the fan, so to speak, uh, we need to have professionals that are dealing with that. What what's the crisis situation? The crisis situation is the violence or the escalation of violence. Yeah, um, yeah. All these other things are great, but. Uh, they need to be done outside of the center of the violence. Yeah, well, you know, you, you know, my feeling is you know, with with this movement going on to defund and or at least to limit the, the police. You know, let, let's use Chaz or Chop as as an example. Uh, you know, <laughs> with, you know, with, with the anarchy there, if you insert, you know, let's say there are no cops or there's limited police, and you know, someone has a nine one one issue, they send out a social worker to Chaz. I don't think that I don't think the uh, you know, in that instance, uh, that social worker would be effective. 
Well, yeah, and not, yeah. here's the other part to it. Let's say that the social worker is a gung-ho person and actually does carry or whatever. They're not, they're not trained in law enforcement. They can't enforce the law. That's not their job. And they do not have, we do not have laws on the books that make social workers instant law enforcement officers. And, and there's a reason for that because they're not law enforcement officers. Yeah. You know, and, and to go further, in these, in these more liberal uh, cities and states, you know, like California, uh, you know, Portland, uh, you know, Seattle, the sentiment is the social workers don't even want to touch a gun. So they, they, if, they, if they are trying to be peaceful, you know, and how do you be peaceful to somebody who is not thinking straight and, you know, and not having to be... Puts, who puts a, a gun to your head and says, gun. shut up, bitch. Exactly. <laughs> like, like, what do you do with that? You say, yes, sir. <laughs> wow, you're really effective. Right. Hey, look, look at the example of Texas. I think, uh, remember with the, all these shootings in the schools some a couple of years ago? And you had uh, teachers in the schools that were arming themselves, and then people were trying to fight with that and saying teachers are not trained law enforcement. But right. in, a, in an active shooting situation, that goes out the window because it's all bets are, you know, gloves come off. A teacher that has, in, in those situations like Columbine and like in, uh, the Newton schools, if that was to happen, and you have a teacher that has has a firearm, you would want that teacher, if that teacher has been trained, has been doing target, even with the target practicing, it's not the same thing as confronting an active shooting. But would you rather have that or lock yourself in place in a, in a classroom where the shooter is going to come in with, you know, an AR-15 and, and knock down the door and shoot up everybody? I mean, these are discussions that have been going on and on. And incredible i mean both sides of the aisle you see one 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 political party says one thing the democrats want to say disarm everybody so yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and the incredible. speed the the speed of what uh, the sentiment is going is, is going by so quickly that i don't know if anybody's thinking straight whether to de defund or you know or even try to meet a portion you know even compromise i don't even comp think compromise it's either all or nothing and uh you know i don't i don't know where we go with this I, all I can say is the same thing that I said to um, candidate Smith is all of these policies to defund or somehow restrain our law enforcement officers, the people that it's going to impact the worst is the minority communities and the lower income people. Because people who are in higher um, tax brackets, as you might call it, they're going to have security in their business. They're going to have bodyguards if they're that famous. And those people are going to be able to intervene and protect them. But, you know, in, in a small, low-income community, when the bad guys come, and believe me, most of them are armed to the T's, the only person that can sit there and defend you or come between you uh, to stop you from getting killed is going to be law enforcement. Right, right. You know, and, and, you know, and what's also scary is I've been watching a lot of raw video, uh, video footage from uh, what's going on in Portland. And that just makes me sad where you have thousands of people walking the streets, or maybe hundreds, you know, still hundreds of people walking the streets at the middle of the night uh, with bullhorns saying, wake up, wake up, and telling mm -hmm. their, uh, you know, their mobsters or their, or their followers to knock on doors and to use flashlights to, uh, you know, flash it in, in windows and tell people to wake up. That's very scary. And um, it's not a protest, by the way. It's not a, exactly, exactly. Because it, there's two reasons why it's not a protest. Number one, you're not petitioning yeah. your government to change anything. Right. Because your neighbors and all the people that you're waking up, they're really, they're not part of the government. So they're not into the legislative thing. Right. Number two is the word, the key word there was peaceful. Right. And waking up people in the dead of night is not peaceful. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and how tra traumatic is that to kids? You know, especially kids are, who are, you know, in middle school or high school, you know, that can be very upsetting and that can traumatize them. So, you know, I don't know what, what the end goal is for these, well, we know the, what the end goal is for these uh, writers and, and these uh, mischief makers, uh, but I don't Chaos see- Chaos and mob you know, rule. Yeah, and why, why can't the liberal Democrats see what's going on? You know, they're ruining our kids, they're, they're traumatizing our kids, uh, you know, all because, you know, they believe that the police justice system is bad, you know, um, it's, it's very scary. And I, I don't but, know but what we can look, do. Look what's happening, what happened in Atlanta the other day. And the cops, uh, what they call the version of the blue flu, 
-hmm. and they were in record numbers pulling out. Yeah. And now they continue doing it on a day-to-day -day basis. I hear now in New York that the cops are texting each other. They're preparing for July 4th to do a massive blue flu after 3 p.m. In New York City, even in my borough, which has 1 million people in the Bronx, mm -hmm. and July 4th is a heated time because already that they're, they're blowing up firecrackers for like a month ago. <laughs> it's not even, they don't even know what July 4th means but they're blowing firecrackers. But that's another way of these lawlessness people. Yeah, so you know what's gonna happen? If the cops somehow do a blue flu in New York City and we're ready, everything is up. Murder, rape, burglary is up in record numbers. Imagine the cops start breaking it down, which they, they cannot walk off the job based on the Taylor law, we know that. But they are already getting upset. They're already frustrated. They're, right now, New York State is coming. They have so many bills coming down the pipe that they can't even keep up to see what's gonna happen. City Council, New York State Assembly, New York State Senate. So they're just going rogue and they're not even asking one person from the other aisle to come to do here. There's no hearings being done. There is no asking police chiefs, no asking experts. Let's try to see how we can do no. They already plan to knock off $1.1 billion from a $6 billion budget for the NYPD for 2021. Imagine with this city being the highest threat for uh, terrorism. And right now, it's chaos right now. It's chaos. And the police morale's like in the like never before seen. What do you guys think? I mean, imagine a blue flu in a city like New York or out there in Nevada or out there in LA, right, Edwin? Imagine a blue flu hitting that, those major cities. Right. You, you know, spe especially when it's, when it's planned. You know, when, when you have police officers saying that there's going to be a blue flu uh, July 4th, you know, if, if I'm, you know, somebody out in the hood down in Compton and I know uh, that the police aren't going to do stuff, uh, you know, I'm going to talk to my, my friends and say, look, uh, yep. you know, you, you have a van, you know, empty out the, get the, get the seats out of the van and we're going shopping. And that's what scares me is, uh, you know, if, if, the, if the criminals know this, you know, uh, we could have chaos and, you know, can, can we rebound from, from that type of chaos? You know, even if it's for one day, one day of chaos, uh, it will be devastating. You know, how many people will get murdered, you know, and how many people will get hurt? You know, especially right now, you have a lot of people who are white. Every, it's, everything's gone in reverse where, you know, back in the, you know, it, you know in the racist times when, uh, you know, blacks were getting murdered and lynched, you know, I, I'm seeing the opposite. I'm seeing, you know, white with this white guilt, uh, you know, these white guilt, you know, kids and and parents are kissing the feet of these very dangerous people you know just think if someone you know if if someone kisses the feet of some of these people they're going to get kicked in the mouth and if yeah. cops are are willing to do anything because they, they called out with the blue flu uh you know it, it's just going to get worse and uh you know thank goodness i'm not you know you know i'm not you know uh white but i'm not black either so you know I, I, yeah uh so everything's you know can, can get very dangerous. Well, you hit a you hit a point that uh, right, Doctor. That we spoke about this. It's not just hey, how you doing, Jennifer? Oh, we're recording, by the way. <laughs> I didn't know. So That's okay. So. And, and what happens is, is that not only there is uh, racism on both sides. Well, right now they're using the white privilege, but Hispanics in Edwin, you could say it also mm -hmm. being Asian. I've seen that it's both. It's all sides. You're seeing black on Hispanic uh, prejudice, racism, and it's getting out of control. And then. My own kids have experienced it. This is something they don't want to talk about. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we are, we will speak about it. I mean, it's just reality. We should be talking to why different groups. It's not just saying right. that the, the, the person that's Caucasian is doing that, but we also have people that are blacks are doing it against the Asians, against the Hispanics. Where do we come to, to, yeah. to stop this madness? Yeah. And that's well, where, you know. Yeah. And, and it's, it's even going worse, you know, um, in, Tor in the city of Torrance uh, last week, a, uh, you know, a crazy mentally, mentally ill, a white woman uh, verbally attacked an Asian uh, girl for, for uh, exercising in the park. And a day later, uh, you know, and, and that, that lady was on, on NBC uh, for the LA, LA local affiliate, the, it, was, it made news. The next mm -hmm. day, someone wrote a letter, typed out a letter and uh, pasted it on a Japanese uh, you know, door saying the Asians go home, this and that. And it just seems funny that the, the letter, uh, you know, there might be racism out there, and I'm not. I'm not saying that there isn't, but it just seems so 
perfectly timed when you know you had this mentally ill lady you know yelling and then this this letter gets taped on uh you know on this asian's door uh you know uh just to talk about race you know to, to provoke race so to me i don't know if it's a true uh situation where it's racism against asians to me i feel based on reading this letter and i'll share the letter with you guys at some point i think that letter was designed to uh provoke and initiate a racist racist act that really wasn't there you know i think they're just provocateurs yeah yeah because well, asians feel left out <laughs> so yeah. in general though when we look at things all that our media is focusing on is trash terror that's all, that's all there, there's everything is negative right so but what it's negative, really it's negative uh, to benefit the black lives matter because right. they're not yeah. posting the right. negative stuff that the police are no. dealing with no it's it's filtered and and it's filtered in a negative light to increase division rather than increase unity so what really concerns me is news now is global it's everywhere so can you imagine what it might be like when our news on steroids is even more narrowed more negative in france because one of my friends is french and she has her family in france and what they get over there if you think the media is biased one-sided and destructive here they take clips of the worst stuff and show it there and French people believe that America is up in flames. They believe that we are all racist. They believe mm -hmm. that Donald Trump is, has brought racism and that we're having race riots all over the place. I mean, they mm -hmm. really do think that America's coming unglued. That's not good for the world, by the way. No, of course not, of course yeah. not. No, I think, I think we're, we've turned into a banana republic yep. and the media, media has uh, emphasized that so much that our, peop our own people are thinking that. Yeah. Imagine the risk, guys, that we're taking. And we spoke also that in the middle of all this chaos, imagine, like, especially New York, how we're always under the threat of terrorism. Imagine, God forbid, they hit us in the middle of this chaos. And imagine how much more chaos we're going to get when the police morale's in the floor, they're defunding the police, people are rioting, people are protesting to a point that is not even a protest, it's more of a riot. And all this is unhinged. And then you get somebody to do right now i think that's one of the things i heard down the pipe is that they're looking to see what they can do to, to just to be careful because we get hit now it would be it would be something that's a nightmare right. and that could be anywhere in the united states in the middle of what we're going through right, right. But, you know, the, yeah. the vulnerability is is the danger part of this because we're on the negative end of being extremely vulnerable if you if you target law enforcement you are in essence defunding the rule of law and when you mm -hmm. do that criminals will take note and they will take that as a what it's not a get out of jail free card but it's kind of like a free moment yeah to go loot arson do whatever it is that you were going to do under the idea of the protest right, right but you guys noticed there was a test run when we had the riots in all our cities and it was a test. I think it was a test run because they did what they did, but the police didn't have control. There was no uh, defunding police. I remember that was June 1st and they lost control completely. I've never seen our cities, my locally, me, 15 minutes from where I live at, I've never seen something like, like looking like a Baghdad in the middle of a war. And that's what we saw. Imagine what's waiting for us. If something was to happen again, they're going to try again to do a test run. Everything is always like a false flag. What are they gonna do to make everybody panic? And I think we've never seen such a record number between coronavirus riots, and now we have the racial war. What is next? Yeah. I mean, they, they, they're hitting us one thing after another, right? Yeah, we know we, we've been weakened. And, uh, you know, and then the second wave of the, you know, of what these governors are saying, um, and they're promoting, they're, you know, they're just weakening us. And they're, you know, they're, you know, creating this, this perpetual fear, you know, so. Dr. Ned, tell us about the second wave. Is yes, there a yeah. second wave? Is, is there a second wave? <laughs> tell us you our know, good doctor. Logically, logically, when we have all been separated and had all this social distancing and whatever, um, logically, if people get back together again, 
there's going to be somewhat of an increase. But but here's the reality of what's going on with this supposed second wave. It's almost it's set up. It's completely set up because a, what is our governor doing? What what is what is the emphasis? The emphasis on more testing. Well, if you increase the number of people that you test, guess what? You're going to find more positives. So your numbers are going to go up. Is that part of a second wave or is that just improved testing? Number two, all of these progressive governors have gotten on the train of protests are good. We won't, we won't ban protests. People can protest all the numbers they want. They, they can we'll join you. We'll take the knee. <laughs> they can break all the social distancing rules and it's cool. Well, wait a minute. Didn't we just have a bunch of social distancing rules and we were wearing masks and doing all these things to prevent contamination of others? See, so they are creating the second wave. Right, right. You know, and you're, you're Governor Sisolak, you know, a, a few days ago, I don't know if it was last night or the night before, but he was out to dinner and he was taking pictures with people at a, at a business uh, dinner. You know, so where was his social distancing with no mask? You know, they're, they're in, you know, right next to each other. And he's, you know, and, you know, for him, he's saying that, you know, it was only for a, a short second. But if what they say is, is true, you know, the, uh, the germs, all they need is a second. So I don't, I don't know. And, you know, especially when a few days ago, uh, you know, your governor, as well as our governor, uh, Gavin Newsom, said that we're in a better place. Uh, so, in one, uh, you know, in one minute, they're saying we're in a better place. And the next minute, you know, we're, we're, we're getting ready for Armageddon again. And it's just like the other part, which is the defund the police department, but our schools are failing. We don't defund them. So, so these inconsistencies, it's almost like they're schizophrenic in their political realm. Right. And, and they're, they're skipping to where the root problem is because the root problem is not, you know, where the criminals and the police, uh, you know, have conflict. You know, there's, there's something that, that goes before where the police and the, the criminals, you know, interact, you know, let's, let's go beyond that, whether it's, you know, uh, education, whether it's parenting, whether it's a single family, you know, household or single parent household. Um, so it's, it's just, it's, you know, um, you know, I, I would love to see where politicians start talking about the root problems instead of, you know, hitting and trying to cure the symptoms. But thus far, thus far, the places that we've seen these quote unquote racial problems are progressive cities. And Correct. law enforcement can only enforce the laws that their progressive legislators, councils, and whatever pass. So if there's a problem and it seems to be highlighted in progressive policy, why are you blaming the police officers? All they're doing is carrying out your laws, your mandates. Right. So who is, who is the problem? Right. Hey, I wanted, I wanted to update you quickly. Um, Congressman Scalise and uh, uh, House Republican leadership are starting to question on a probe in regards to the nursing homes. And it looks like they questioned uh, Governor Cuomo from New York, Governor Murphy from New Jersey, and it looks like about five states that are all Democrat, they're now crying, saying, why are they picking on us? But these are the states that did the similar memo executive orders to make these nursing homes accept uh, the patients that were co with COVID-19, which our number in New York is up to 6,200 deaths. And they're looking into probing it and they're not cooperating. You know what these governors have said on record? They said they don't have to answer any questions because the House is Democrat uh, dominant run nothing's going to happen. I mean, think about it. They don't want to face this because they have the power right now in the House. I wish somebody in the Senate uh, would start their own probe because it's not going to happen in the House. They're, they're not cooperating with what's happening. What do you think about that? I think that their policy created um, euthanasia in our elderly. I really do. Yep. And you know, it hits home for me, Dr. Nett and Edwin, because my grandmother, who was positive, thank God she's negative as of a four or five days ago, and she's back at the nursing home. We're still dealing with other situations, but because of a May 10th, 10th another executive order by my governor, and now he forced the homes to block 
people that were COVID-19 to come back into the homes. But one important point, during the time of the March 25th memo, the U.S. Comforter was here, U.S. Comfort was here, docked, ready to serve with a thousand bed capacity. It started off to relieve the hospitals, not COVID-19 patients, but it ended up because the governor of New York uh, requested that the, that the president allow that they serve COVID-19 patients and he, he granted it. So they only served 180 patients out of a thousand. New York City mayor had a makeshift uh, portable hospital in Brooklyn, $21 million from taxpayer funds and not one person, this is not one patient was served. And then we were having the situation with the nursing homes. We could go on and on, but they have more than enough to, to, to show that these people were negligent. And already there's three lawsuits already that I hear about that's pending right now. Families are suing for the families that have died in these nursing homes. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, you know, we're not gonna know the true, true story of what, what happened. You know, even though we kind of have an idea, we're not really gonna have any proof of what, what went on until after you know, the, this administration change, or you know, at, at least the House changes over to a, a Republican uh, leadership. Um, can, can I make a quick statement? For sure. The people that are running on Tuesday's New York congressional ticket for primary Democrats, I have not heard any of you uh, uh, speak on behalf of the elderly, the 6,200 that have passed away. Where are you when it comes to Representative Scalise? It's nothing to do with party or what party preference you are part of. It has to do with what's right. You know it's right. Uh, Representative uh, Espaillat is the one in the 13th Congressional. He is the incumbent, he's running again. And all he did was do a little bit of a protesting outside of a hospital, a nursing home in Manhattan that they have over a hundred deaths so far. Where are the folks that are listening to us that are running for the Democratic ticket? You have not heard of any of them to speak on this issue when it comes to the nursing homes. I will be joining a group called Voices for Seniors on June 27th, and they're gonna be protesting outside of Governor Cuomo's office. And these are people that have lost family members and people that have had their families that have been sick like mine. So I just wanted to put that out there, guys. Oh, cool. cool. Well, and, and to add insult to injury, Henry, psychologically, oh, yeah. families were also unable to see their loved one as they died by right. themselves in a uh, nursing home. They died alone. And, uh, yep, yeah. yep, yep. All right, well, we're, uh, we're coming up to our final few minutes. Uh, I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm, gonna hit, I'm gonna hit the pause on this and let's, let's continue this conversation. Uh, you know, offline and, uh, okay. you know, we'll talk to everybody soon.